how you know a game's gonna be good. Yes, this is uh, Kingdom Under Fire, a game we're also gonna force play to play, just like we're gonna force him to play the E.T. game. Are you talking about the NES game that sucked ball? Yes, the one for Atari. <laughs> oh god, we gotta find one in the legendary landfill. <laughs> Matt, that game literally started a video game recession. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh my god. But yes, I'm not even kidding. It was so bad. It literally caused video games to not be bought by people. It was horrible. It's something similar to what's happening is where video games were just so terrible and so poorly made that people just stopped buying them because they aren't a good product. If you don't make a good product, especially in the entertainment industry, they're just going to find someone else that will. Which is why we have indie studios. Yeah. E.T. literally made people cry. <laughs> the children were crying because of how bad it was. Anyway, on to the... Kids. Children must be made to suffer. Oh my god. I'm not sure if we're going to get Platy to play Rogue Trader with us, but we'll see what happens. It's the... Yes, you can hear the rock and roll. I'm sure there are people out there who thought this game was a dream. Honestly, it looks like Crusaders a fever dream. is a tactical RTS action hack and slash RPG something. That was not Honestly, the, I the idea of a tactical <laughs> RPG uh, hack and slash RTS where I leave my soldiers in a battle always interested me. Xbox exclusive. Because I like the idea of leading from the front while also ordering my troops around. In 2004. Then, 16 Ooh. years later, it got an official PC port. Huh. Better late than never, huh? This is a very basic port, because yeah, you can technically play with mouse and keyboard now, but that's but, like saying uh... technically you can skip work if you light yourself on fire. <laughs> I mean... I mean, Platy has done such. Look, sometimes fire happens, and it always just happens to be where I am. For those who don't know, Platy has almost been lit on fire before at his workplace. Just... I don't even know how these days. I don't work toward around like but one open flame. Uh, it's because you're platy. I mean, you could, but this is a game you play with a controller. The only fancy new visuals are that you can turn up your shadow resolution. By just oh. starting a game, you are treated to a huge amount of lore. Oh. That's because Crusaders is a sequel. So while I'd wager Ooh. most people know this game in Heroes, I'm gonna go over the weird road this franchise has taken. Ready? In 2001, we've got Kingdom Under Fire, A War of Heroes. It didn't sell well in the West, but did very good in Korea. It looks that like could a be because Warcraft this game clone. and the entire franchise is Korean. What's clear is that A War of Heroes desperately wanted to be a Blizzard game. It tried to combine yeah. both Warcraft and Diablo, and it wasn't so good at that. It also started with a huge lore dump, and combining the mistranslations and weird writing, a lot of finer details will become borderline incomprehensible. Wonderful. The Shrek storybook in Crusaders does cover the big point. Why? There was a war between good and evil, and a mysterious relic called the Ancient Heart. If okay. you see the heart, or touch the heart, or think about the heart, you turn evil. How the what? fuck do you beat that? Apparently the answer is God gets really pissed off and gets rid of it. So <laughs> I love that. This guy gets pissed off and gets rid of it. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Where the battle and heart smiting took place is now known as the Holy Ground. Okay, but a quick side note. The Ancient Heart okay. also resurrected and created this world's version of Sauron. Okay. We've had Kmart Sauron, actual Sauron, now make way for Baywatch Sauron. Oh. The overlord of the Dark Legion is Rick Blood, master of the orcs in darkness, Rick. A oh. War of Heroes is mainly generic fantasy. Well, then. They lived together peacefully for many prosperous centuries, until the day a great evil arose. What? Wait, what? So when the first game is like this... All the lore. Oh this makes God. Crusaders so words. much stranger. <laughs> this is why we know Platy will not be able to defeat the Crypt Master. You go from a typical old man talking about the Magic Kingdom to I'm desperately trying to find the outhouse at a Metallica cover band <laughs> venue. I love that thing. <laughs> I'm desperate to find the out <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. It does sound like it. I like that dude's armor. I want it. That's a bold new direction, and as I'll talk about soon, they kind of pulled it off. But we're not done yet. With its mix of strategy and also, action Also, he and looks constant... like a character from uh, one of the... You know how when they di didn't have good graphics, they would just stylize the characters? Like, especially their mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah, he seems to have that same thing that old, like, Grand Theft Auto 3 characters have, where they don't actually have eyes, they have weird-shaped eyebrow 
I slipped. metal music. I don't get Blizzard clone out of this like I did with the War of Heroes. Instead, it's we believe the Wei Gugen will find this hardcore. Oh. Also, we're really gunning for the badass seal of approval this oh. year. <laughs> and maybe the year after. Because then they released a follow-up just called Kingdom Under Fire Heroes. Ooh. Which is basically the same game, but with some new campaigns and refinements. This one's gonna come up again. On 360, they made Kingdom Under Fire Circle of what? Doom, which removed the RTS elements entirely to make it a hack and slash. Okay. This didn't go over well, but you could play as a crying elf girl who could kill enemies with her tears. I what the hell? <laughs> they know what the people want. I don't think they do, Platy. I, I have no clue. So for Kingdom Under Fire 2, let's bring Oh, I love the design right there. Except for the parts where he's naked the RTS stuff, and make it an MMO. Oh. I'm gonna level with you. I have no idea what's going on in the series. So if something uh. weird in Crusaders is explained somewhere else, I probably won't know about it. They that tried to sense. sell this as mainly standalone, and we'll see how they did. Going back to the intro, the game's premise looks pretty simple. Don't believe me? I'll show you. Check out these delts. What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the delts, they were too powerful. <laughs> My god. Really, Platy? Eeks of the Hex. Gerald, we must go. Essa needs to be Her warned. Her design is alright. Wait! Look! Oh, look. Make them pay with their blood. Swing away, boys! Just wipe out the enemy. You'll be golden. Okay. After the lore dump, you have two campaigns to choose between. The human soldier Gerald, who is basically Tutorial Man, and Lucy, the Dark Elf of the Dark Legion. Oh. By beating hers, you unlock a hard campaign for each faction. The hard campaigns do expect a lot more out of you compared to the base ones. It is weird that almost half- Oh, he's playing- I just realized what music he's playing in the background. That is from, uh, Metal Wolf Chaos. It's the screen where you just basically picking out weapons. The game is just preparing you for hard. It does try to ease you into the experience, but it almost goes too slowly. Gerald's missions can be so leisurely that they're basically a different game compared to Kendall's, but I'll get oh. into that in a bit. Visually, Crusaders does some impressive things I for do like the, uh, hero It blows my here. mind how many characters you can have on screen fighting at once. This was later in the console's life cycle, so oh, they've yeah, gotten pretty good is, at opt- Oh yeah, this is an Xbox 360 game. Oh no. Hmm. Yeah. Optimizing it, but wow. It does look like the draw distance was improved for PC, but even in the immediate area, it's an intense amount of action. A lot of maps are still drowning in fog. It's not oh. as short as something like Morrowind, but it's a less detailed world. It basically had to be to make this many characters work. Even with that, there were some times where I thought the fog added mystique to a level. That the force becomes ominous, the giant creature looks like something straight Holy up- Holy shit! What is that? That's a weird horse. I don't think that's a horse party at all. You're right, it could be a moose. <laughs> the bag of nails are coming for you. Oh no. Out of the mist. I still wish yeah, they bumped it, does it up with like the PC version, the mist. but it has its moments. Bad ones too, because the terrain generally is barren, and all the trees and rolled objects don't look nice either and will mainly get in your way. Sometimes there are more filled in areas, but the biggest battles will never be here. The that more a map sense. looks like the Gobi Desert, the better chance you have of getting a big fight. The units themselves are good models for an RTS game. All Ooh. of the officers and named characters also get some extra detail. Ironically, cool. it's the cutscenes where the weaknesses really show up because they put the camera right in their faces while they're just yeah. doing their flap breathing animation thing. They can look like nightmare people, which <laughs> I don't think was the intention. Still, there is some unique art direction to be found. For once, the forces of good got most of the varied and more interesting- I do really like these design of these soldiers though, even though they all design. kind of have like a beak. And that dude has a dragon head for some reason. The Dark Legion <laughs> mostly has similar flavors of orc. There's green, greener, undead. The Dark Elves don't have much variation either. Oh which, wow. Which you know, I, I give him a pass. The true big the dark elves are the barely camera. wearing anything. <laughs> yeah, it makes too much sense. I hate it. They know what the people want. <laughs> <laughs> just... That's not allowed. No. <laughs> it was mainly a huge issue in Gerald's campaign, but that could be because his had the most trees in it. The angles you can have depend on where you are in the map, so even adjusting it, you can still be blocked off. Sometimes mm. the camera wants to be in the stratosphere. Sometimes it wants to dig for worms. Wonderful. Usually it's fine and you don't need to adjust it too much, but it adds randomness and unpredictability in sometimes crucial moments. Sometimes yeah, you walk really through the woods bad. fine, sometimes you can't see. That said, it's really the sound that stuck out to me. With the exception of the main menu, every single song in the <laughs> game is metal. I can't stress enough how constant it is. Hearing about the story, mission briefings, the missions, all metal. Oh. Oh, look. 
I mean, it's a pretty good metal that I like to listen to while fighting. Sappers and catapults are to concentrate Even on destroying tactics. their barricades. The rear line will attack the main enemy forces and give cover to well, the sappers and catapults. Seems to like the metal. Like it's even going faster now. Now I'm not a huge metalhead and I don't know how accurate I can be here. The game does have a lot of music I liked. They were not shy about the soundtrack. They go so big with it that I'm actually shocked there were no songs with lyrics in them. It wouldn't be out of place. Yeah. They're going crazy on that guitar. Move. This way. No. No, no, Ruto. Oh, so we can have Mr. Overlord over here for more of the rings, but we can't have whatever I said earlier. I forgot. <laughs> oh my god! Don't be afraid. Oh my god, I do like that he literally does the help to, like, attack. He doesn't even... Yeah. But yeah, the, the rock seems constant. There are times when it does chill out, but it's not that often. Subjectively, sure I wouldn't listen to heavy metal back to back for hours on end, but this could be someone's dream game in that regard. The True. issue is the rest of the sound. Ready. Ready. For the Xbox, Archers. this game has some really fucked up audio compression. Even after fiddling with audio sliders, the mixing is just terrible. But oh. the worst part is when a fight is over. Good. Oh god, the horse! Yeah, the horse. Oh my god, oh. fucking Lego! Oh dear god! overlaps per troop unit, and if you lose <laughs> in a fight like this... Oh my god. Oh no. This is a quarter of the if actual volume. Form becomes a solid wall, <laughs> it's time to Jesus. fucking start over again. To dear god! <laughs> that is, uh, something else. Add an extra layer of madness, it's only a sometimes deal. The actual battle soundscape is perfectly fine. There can be low quality effects that stick out as being bad, but they're not grating. Even the victory cheers will often sound normal. How it's layered okay. is still bad, is but you're not scorpion? expecting an attack. So the issue is you have constant, pretty average to subpar battle sounds, combined with an occasional nuclear strike in your ears, okay, and the whole time metal music is playing. <laughs> The music does come together with the action sometimes, and it's very cathartic. Mm. But the game is such a noise hurricane, I can only play it in bursts. Oh, oh right, the sense. voice acting. Look at the sun. If there truly is a god, he is on our side today. Oh, well. Now this will be the last briefing for today's mission, so listen well. Have you ever seen hogs do anything right the first <laughs> time? Ever? Now see to it! What them. did you do in the war? I babysat pigs, that's what. This sucks. Gerald, I object to leaving our border post to attend mass at Youngsburg. Well, orders, and we live to serve. At first <laughs> I thought that was a glitch, but no. Insulting the this insulting god. The Cadus would lead the to the <sighs> holy ground and the full army. They're censoring the word pope by just cutting the audio. What the hell? Did you hear that? <laughs> Look, uh, that, that, that word is bad, okay? Unless it's for me. What? Oh my god. <laughs> the funny thing is, I actually do know a VTuber who is the the raccoon pope. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. Praise me. <gasps> Dear god. Praise me. Oh my god. I'm going forward now. He's a major player too, so this is bizarre. It does explain why you can't turn off the subtitles or else you'd miss part of the story. Characters mm -hmm. will also say capital G God, but the captions change it to the God lowercase. That's It'll weird. mess up sentence structure too, like someone had just used control F for the script. This is clearly some last minute censorship. Yeah. And for everything people could get on the Catholic Church for, just mentioning the Pope? I mean, people even nowadays make fun of the church even unnecessarily to the point of craziness. Mm -hmm. So this is very strange. Like, people can get a lot away with messing with, well, Catholicism. Be a few hundred years ago in some select cities, but not in 2004. 
South Korea did and still does have a significant Ooh, Christian nice population cool. there, so I thought oh. maybe they were pushing the boundary of some kind of That I did not know, that they have quite a big Christian population. Local law, but no. From what I found, at the last second the developers were terrified that including the Pope would offend Westerners. You can't exactly remove him from the story at this point when he's so integral. So yeah. they clipped all audio mentioning him, and in subtitles, he's just the patriarch. Boy, if only they knew where things would be so soon. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we're the killing the Pope in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> release also included the option for the original yeah. Korean voice acting, which seems oh. way better technically and delivery-wise. Yeah, that's what usually happens when they do it in their original country. The voice acting is usually a lot better, which some, with some exceptions. For this we have been bled white. Soldiers, behold the holy ground. Wow. Still, I don't want to be getting into the story go. just yet. Despite all of its <laughs> many, many faults, the gameplay is worth talking about. By using your right stick, you control the direction and the range your troops move in. By holding okay. a shoulder button, you can expand the mini-map and move your forces that way. You can move all your forces at once, or cycle through them for individual orders. There is a learning curve to this, and it does explain the slowness of Gerald's campaign. Despite first impressions, there is a shocking amount of depth. For one, with the triggers, you can change the formations of most units. Okay. Putting your soldiers in wider formations allows them to move and turn faster. A tight-knit formation can make a unit sneakier and harder to see. Ooh. If they have shields, they're better at covering each other from arrows. Each has benefits and drawbacks, and you can be adjusting these almost as much as you're moving your army. However, not every unit uses these formations. In the case of archers, the triggers control how wide or narrow their shots go. Okay, if your enemy's position sense. isn't clear, or you're fighting from extreme range, you need to make guesses on how you should be shooting. Or... You can send a smaller force or a deployable scout ahead to act as a spotter. Then you can get the exact bombardment width you need. Also take into account the position of your range units. That is a lot units, of strategy, relative actually. Relative to the enemy, is the sun in their eyes? Yeah, is anything that, in their way? There is a lot of good tactical gameplay to be had, and not all units can be set to attack and forget. With cavalry, you don't want to move them onto the enemy, but instead move through them. They'll barrel yeah. through weaker troops and can take out a formation without taking a scratch. You could micro them around for max effectiveness, or set some waypoints in a busy area and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Though again, you've got to be thinking carefully. Are there anti-cavalry units in the area? Yeah, now, like spearmen can literally take them down. Charge can delete a unit, a bad charge into them can have yeah. your own wipe out. So if you're quick and clever shank. enough, you can bait fast movers into spears that they can't turn away from easily. Uh -huh. Or in the case of the Dark Legion, like the anti-horse throwing axes. <laughs> Not everything will add up sometimes. It, it's fine. Orcs have a orc for a Apparently, that's what the orcs do. Taylor. Again, these are just some. So, yeah, the anti horse throwing axes. That's a thing. <laughs> you. Anti horse throwing axes. <laughs> it's very important that we have specific weapons for horses. They're incredibly powerful. <gasps> I mean, we do have boar spears, which are spears specifically made to kill boars. We mm -hmm, boys are mm -hmm. dangerous, though. 30 to mm -hmm. 50 feral hogs. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, it's very, but I will just say that it's very, a pig can turn into a boar very quickly. if you Maneuvering know. examples. In battle, you have a resource yeah, called SP, kind of which might be special points. I don't think they say. But you earn it through general combat and victories and okay. gain more by pulling off tactical maneuvers. You can then spend these Sun Tzu points on unit abilities. Human okay. archers can use fire arrows to burn down forests and Ooh. enemy positions. Contrast with Dark Elf Archers who can make magic arrows for extra damage. Or summon a magic fancy tree of healing, because of course they do that. <laughs> there are sappers who can place Burmese tiger pits, landmines, and other toys from the Viet Cong fun box to bait enemies into, though they can also go on anti-trap duty themselves. Oh, and sometimes cool. units are led by officers who know magic. So sometimes you send out a blizzard or plunge your enemy into darkness. Ooh. So while all of this is happening, how does the action hack and slash kick assing fit into it? It's a tricky situation. It's deceptive because at first it seems undercooked and just kind of bad, when instead okay. it's well thought out, but it doesn't show in the first stages of the game. When a unit led by your hero engages the enemy, the game shifts over into action mode. Both Ooh. squads engage on their own and you can personally run around slapping people. Each campaign only has one controllable hero. That Gerald is your basic sword fight man. I can't say anything bad because I make guys just like him in most RPGs. Yeah, so do I. Honestly. I like making a big sword, man. I always go with sword and board. Of course you do. I prefer the Look, big... the board is very important. Why? Safety, because we, we got to practice uh, workplace safety. And when your workplace is murdering people, that means you got to put yourself as much PPE as possible. Oh my god. Hits with a big sword, blocks with a big sword, and hates the orcs. Oh, all this fried hog. 
All we need now is some scrambled eggs. God damn. Lucretia of the Dark Legion is all about Ooh. speed and anime bullshit. <laughs> she can't block, but she can dodge. She likes bullying her ex-boyfriend. Oh, wow. That's my Lucy. Don't call me Lucy, you gigolo. <laughs> Kendall. <laughs> I haven't heard that. <laughs> I haven't heard that word in a long time. He's a slower powerhouse warrior. No. He carries a mason uh. halberd and is a loyal servant of the Pope. <laughs> Even cut itself off. When he wins fights, he's already looking for the next heretic to smash. I do like his weaponry of a giant warhammer and a sword going on. Rainier is the Dark Lord of Hexter. He has an evil sword and loves running around in a loincloth and World of Warcraft pauldrons. <laughs> he parries by using the Force and is rumored to be Rick Blood. Of course he's Rick Blood. I am Rick Blood. The characters have different fights. What? What plenty? I didn't say shit. Fighting styles, but calling what they have movesets would be generous. You have your light and strong attacks, and maybe two or three unique combos per okay. character. They also have a special execution move that does more damage, but costs SP. If the hero's unit has officers in it, they can also spend SP to use the unique officer assist attack. These can be helpful, but they're things you've usually picked out far before the battle started. You never have something like a duel with another unique character. You can try to find the enemy unit's officer and kill them. If you pull it off, morale shatters and the squad disintegrates. Certain characters are much better at this. Lucy takes a while, they watch Sauron can one-shot them. Cool. Usually though, half the challenge is finding the leaders since they don't always stand out. They uh. can often look identical to regular soldiers and you can only pick one out when you whack one and a health bar pops up. Summed up, there's not a lot of depth to the action mode. Which I mean, it makes sense the leaders would fight each other. Because That's the Dynasty Warriors too. in the room is very focused on pulling off combos and special moves. And first, looking at Crusaders, you might I mean, yeah, Dynasty Warriors has always been a big thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're gonna start the stream while also still reacting to this. But they'll have to watch it while uh, we're doing. Anyway, we're all expected to be a Dynasty Warriors clone. The combat here is simpler, but it's because the developers didn't want you stuck too far into it. You still have your troops to cycle back to. And You're what now? The very people that look to you for defense. <laughs> what? You cut off halfway through and went roboting, so I didn't understand a word you said. Anyway, that's Platy over there. Don't mind him. I can't believe. Wait, no, mind me. I, I'm full of cholesterol and love. <laughs> Oh my god. Instead of staying completely in the fight, you send out a cavalry charge, or move your archers behind the enemy. Both tactics and pure Ungabunga hits reward you with SP, which you can use on either. So you could pull off a flank with archers, okay. but then go right back into action mode to pull off an assist move. Cool. Crusaders really is about strategy. Do you know where that sound... <laughs> Do you know what that sound... But every time there's lightning or someone getting shocked, apparently, in, uh these videos do you know what do you know where their sound bite is from that mandalore uses <laughs> it's from home alone one where this one guy grabs a handle that's been electrified oh. and turns into a skeleton <laughs> i don't know why he used it but he More does than anything and this is reflected by the other side of the game, which is battle preparation. Ooh. As you win missions, you're awarded with golden experience. Again, this is tied to your SP levels, so the bigger your brain, the more you gain. Your squads all have a level, but it's determined by the leading officer. So experience is spent on them, but really it goes through the whole unit. Which at first seems odd, but there is a good reason for this. Okay. As long as the unit has the required skills, it can convert into another one freely. An officer oh. could lead spearmen in Please. one mission, and then use mortars in the next. Your leaders will be specialized them. for only a few types, but you do have some flexibility. Due to action mode, your campaign hero is always stuck with a melee unit. But for their underlings, you can adjust all kinds of things around. Ooh. You can focus on a troop type or unlock a magic specialization. It's also here you learn that troops are resistant and weak to different damage types. Armored knights get owned by lightning, orcs have an innate weakness to ice, and the undead okay. hate learning about Jesus, <laughs> which in this setting might be orc Jesus. What the I... hell? Orc angel, orc angel, oh my god! Damn. He's beautiful. What the hell? may have missed that part when you help i just saw a okay. with experience you can use the gold to hire more officers and get more options how many troops you can deploy is limited so it's not always ideal 
Instead, you're usually buying new equipment, which can have all kinds of bonus effects. These are also level restricted, so there is a balancing act between your skills and your money. Okay. Playing your cards right, you can get some absurd min-maxing. Like, what if my hero's unit was virtually immune to melee damage, Ooh. and was constantly self-healing? Oh. If you spend a lot of time in action wow. mode, you could give your heroes something like an elemental weapon. There's a lot to play around with, and to add an extra layer of greatness to the system, the units do physically change based on the upgrades. That is cool. At first glance, I actually it's easy. do love it when they physically change whenever you upgrade them, because it feels like you're actually doing something. To see Crusaders yeah. as a dumb metal mosh pit, but there's so much behind it. You'll never be controlling a huge amount of units, and what some the hell players is on are that one knight's head? controlled to the, the D-pad like an ability. Thing. This causes some drawbacks later on. The hard campaigns give you a ton of freedom, but what's actually viable is much more limited. Uh. Your enemies are far more reactive, and now they cast spells like Merlin has learned he has only a week to live. <laughs> Later missions become pure endurance. Where healing magic can be incredibly helpful before, you need it now. If you became reliant uh. on abilities instead of movement and formations, that'll really hurt you in these sections. I see. It expects more clever maneuvering from you here than ever before. Which is cool and I like that, but it becomes clear a lot of fun options you had before will melt away as the stakes raise. Things yeah, can start when things usually get more difficult, sometimes you get less options to choose, especially in tactics. It's uh, how it goes sometimes for impact. what's actually viable. It's not what happens all the time, but it, it does happen sometimes. Before. If you like the proper massive battles, there's going to be a lot of them. So that brings me to the story. The overall yeah. points are very simple, but there are finer details I'm not even going to bother to bring up. There's a lot of political details that mainly rely on you knowing about the first game, and other mm -hmm. points aren't addressed in this game, but instead in Heroes, which is both a prequel and happening at the same time. Oh. So the story isn't all here to begin with. Dark Elves are ruled by vampires, but there are High Elves who want to rebel, but they use the terms interchangeably. Well then. So Haranadin finally falls under this High Elf's feet. That's very confusing. <laughs> Is this not if the... you pay attention? <laughs> you, Platy, have you been paying attention at all? I've been looking at them legs. Oh my First god. First time you're leading an army this large, my dark elf. And look, I don't give a shit. In the campaign map, you can get some story, manage your army, and poke at some lore tidbits. Mm. A lot of information can come from eavesdropping at pubs. Okay. Gerald's campaign might have the least information here because the pub is full of people complaining about the elves, or as okay. they call them, the darks. Oh. Darks are coming from the southwest. Those darks planned this all along. Look what those darks did to our people. You go to bars where generic rock <sighs> plays and overhear people loudly complaining about darks. <laughs> this isn't my first rodeo with this. Hell? So unfortunate translation aside, that's... That's, uh... Wow. I like it uh, was a very sad chuckle at that. Anyway, I should probably get Chrono over here at some point, but we'll we'll continue on with this, and then he'll jump in. Probably the most interesting thing in Gerald's campaign. He is the most Xbox game protagonist who wants to wipe out the enemy and get revenge. In retrospect, it's neat, mm. but it's a horribly generic first impression for the campaigns. Lucy's campaign is more entertaining, but also for a dumb reason. Okay. Instead of their dialogue being, we must wipe out the enemy and defeat the evil, they argue constantly. Oh, they try like to bring up the elf political elf situation, but it's basically a joke. It's like the cast of the Jersey Shore is trying to do a table reading of the Council of Rivendell, <laughs> but there was a party the night before where everyone cheated on everyone, so they keep breaking character to yell at each other. They go to meet the Dark Lord of the Orcs, and this is their first reaction. Rainier has arrived. Wow. <laughs> Finally in the flesh. Oh my god, he's ripped! <laughs> it does devolve back. <laughs> oh my god. Back into dry politics, but good god, it's something. Kendall is also wipe out the enemy man, but he is uncovering something. His camp That's an interesting... campaign takes a dramatic turn. That is an interesting idea where basically you maybe wipe out the enemy man, but you're still finding out stuff. You're still learning. Hmm. Like you're still trying to find out what's going on here. I feel like something's going on. And then I smack Platy with a warhammer. No. By the way, Platy, when we when Fable plays Blood Bowl, you're going to be the football. Oh my god. I'm gonna be the coach. He's going that to be the player. Be held by Benny and all. <gasps> you're going to be kicked a lot. And I would say the exact same thing about Rick Blood's campaign. Both are fighting for control of the Ancient Heart, but something doesn't seem right. Also, the orcs in his pub really just want to farm. <laughs> Sometimes they want to use the enemy as fertilizer, but they really love farming. And <laughs> not all of them want to eat man flesh. These are weird orcs. Anyway, if you don't want spoilers, go to here. 
Okay, okay so remember the village burning Over. in the beginning? That was a false flag attack by other humans. Again. Oh. That's interesting. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. Hey, Chrono. That's... Hey, Chrono. How's Mori doing? Hi. Uh, good. I ain't gonna be able to talk much right now because my throat is killing me right now. No, that's completely fine. The details are in the next game. Oh, there's yeah. Mori. Oh, Revelia! You put a gliding me up there! Okay, we are just about to get to the story of this game, so we'll see what the hell is going on here. Go to here. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, so remember the village burning in the beginning? That was a false flag attack by other humans. Again, oh. the details are in the next game. That's kind of The Pope crazy. received a vision from God to destroy the ancient heart, but so did someone else. A man named Walter. Walter was going to make a secret alliance with Dark Elves who didn't like being ruled by vampires to help him find the heart. Okay. As you'd expect, this kind of team- You don't know who Walter is, Platty. Oh god, Walter. Hey, Walter I'll have to know he makes very good pharmaceuticals. Yes, exactly. God oh, damn it! <laughs> anyway, as he was saying, he made- he apparently was making a alliance with Dark Elves to find the ancient heart. Uh, it would be very frowned upon, so they had to do it in secret. Okay. A nearby villager saw Just the like meeting the and ran home the to keep the secret. No. Thou, mo thou whore. <laughs> Nearby villagers Ooh. saw the meeting and ran home. To keep the secret, Walter and his troops would have to slaughter them all. This Damn. is the first mission of Walter's campaign in Heroes, and it's pretty brutal. God damn. That's a. Uh... Wow. Kill them all! <laughs> They said kill them all because they couldn't let anyone know about the Alliance. As the war kicks off, Walter does manage to get the heart, but the Pope, for some reason, says that Walter has stolen it. So the Pope uses Kendall to try and hunt him down and retrieve it. Kendall does catch up with Walter, but Walter claims the Pope wants to keep the heart for himself. Why would the Pope not want to break what God told him to? Because I'm this mech wolf, I wanted to see you see their 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 teeny tiny face oh God. that that eternally scowls at me. I'm gonna use the broom to just brush him out of the room. Anyway, in Rick Blood's campaign, it's revealed that the heart has direct control over him. Whoever has it can directly puppet him, so he's trying to find it for himself to okay, stop this. That's he breaks away from his own homeland and fights everybody on the way to the heart. He's desperate to control his own destiny. In Gerald's campaign, he's just the big evil bad guy. And in a terrible slow motion cutscene, Rick rolls one of his friends directly <laughs> into oblivion. But Rick he rolls. doesn't slaughter everyone else. Huh. Then, despite the efforts of everyone, Walter manages to fulfill God's plan and break the heart, giving okay. a pre-rendered cutscene for the first time in the game. Ready? Let's see what the hell's going on. Oh. What was that? Uh, oh. Oh, those arrows are on your back. You don't need to be rolling around like that. I think he's dying, Platty. <laughs> It'll get better. <gasps> I don't think I am. Okay. What the heck is. What is that? Which god did this Something. vision come from? Uh. Oh. Yeah, that's not. Not the horse. It turns out breaking the heart starts what looks like the advent. It's kind oh. of amazing. Nothing to this point indicated the game would go to this kind of scale. It looks like that Anyhow, thing that happened when someone activated the Bailiff. In the uh, Berserk. That's when the Demon Swarm begins. Hey, what? Oh. Oh. Demons. Oh no! The next it's missions get different. Defense. Oh. Things look very different. Swarm of demons. 
The world is now threatened by a cosmic horror. The demons will consume all of life and usher in the Age of Darkness. Without the heart, Baywatch Sauron will slowly become mortal and one day die. He's just as horrified as everyone else. What have the humans done? This is... Thank you for the resub, Penguin. Thank you for that. Yeah, oh, God, Mike is streaming uh, yeah, times okay. I'm awake. Yes, listen, I have... For those who don't know, uh... If I become a big enough streamer, I no longer have to work and just re and can just react to stuff for you guys or play games for you guys or stream for you guys. Unfortunately, I do have to work. So yeah, I, I I'm not sure if I should say unfortunately, but the work I do is now very hard because it's very hot outside. That's all I'll say about it. Rick Blood initiates. I know you got a night job. Is Mick robot in? I am not roboting. Glad. Oh, well, anyway. Back to the thingy. Mech was peeking so hard. Okay. Peace talks with everyone and unites the world against the threat. He explains that there's a god of light and darkness, but only one can be awake at a time. Whenever the heart deteriorates from the ravages of time, one god awakens and the other goes to sleep. Okay. It's actually supposed to be the Age of Darkness, but someone had destroyed the last heart early. So Encabloso, the god of darkness, has successfully tricked his time back. Rick Blood becomes the hero in uniting the world and says things that I would never imagine from this character design. I want to return the world to the Age of Light. It's far from the first well, game to pull out the third faction who's a threat to everyone, but it yeah, does it in such an interesting and unexpected way. Generic Xbox man and his heroism are just a pawn for greater schemes. Religion itself is mostly wrong and are just Lovecraftian elder gods. The immortal Dark Lord figure knows all of this and has been working with it in mind. This oh. story has some fascinating elements, but a lot of execution up until now has been terrible. Heard you might get promoted soon. Way to go, Lucy. <laughs> no thanks to you, dumbass. While this only <laughs> happens at the tail end of the hard campaigns, they both have the most oh torturous God. final mission possible. It's the same for each, too. Pierce the surface of Encablosa with a flying unit, then conduct a ritual to get inside of it. The camera has generally been better in the hard campaigns, but now, this is all trees. Swarms oh. of demons packed inside a giant forest during a snowstorm. And the map is laid out like a canyon that you need to snake through. If you pull it off, the mission then begins a second part, which is killing the avatar of the Dark Ooh. God from inside of him. I've gotta say, when I started the game, I did not see things going this way. Oh, a river but of Halloween blood. is right around the corner. The K-Berserk mission sucks in a lot oh of ways. Oh my god, look at Doesn't the map. Doesn't feel like an ultimate test of your tactics or anything you learned. Inside the Eclipse is slightly better, but this it's a slog like a of a battle up until real. then. It is fun blowing up demons with artillery, but they managed to make that get old. I should never be tired of shelling demons. True. When you win, you do get to see it die and explode, which is satisfying, but the epilogues after that are weak. There are a lot of tidbits here, but out of everything, I mainly recall how many ex-girlfriends got Wait, what? Imagine if every game did that. Crusaders is incredibly ambitious, and especially for an Xbox game. There's a lot of strategic depth to it and many ways to play out missions. It's a full-length game just running through all of them <laughs> once. It is held back by the camera, general clunkiness, and by some By the way, there's always metal music points, in this game But a lot of it might already be addressed in a way. There are seven campaigns and I'm not far in, but what I've played of here has fixed a lot of it. The camera mm. behaves way better with obstacles. Oh, that's the fighting nice. flows a little smoother and there's no nuclear cheering. Don't worry. You'll get good enough to be able to play this game. It also has oh custom God. battles in it, so there's a lot to dig into. Both the PC versions <laughs> came out for $20, which is far too expensive for this kind of port. Oh, $20? I did ask if they could put it on sale for the video, but I haven't heard back yet, so we'll see. I can recommend Crusaders in the same way you recommend, like, a really violent B-movie. It's violent and silly, and you can't believe some parts they think you'll take seriously. But you can see that this is a cool idea, and you wish they had more time and budget. But yeah. maybe that couldn't help as much as you think, because this is so different. Even that comparison doesn't feel fair, because this is a genuinely tactical game. It's something unique. I'm sure there's a lot of people who picked this up for the first I time as a kid or a teenager like on Xbox. And for them, it was an awesome game. In a lot of ways, they were right because I probably would have died horribly while playing it's this game because I It's just those details that a lot of people take for granted that do hold it back. You know, the idea a game won't try to blow up your ears sometimes. That's it for now, but October is mm. coming. I might have time to talk about a smaller <laughs> horror game or two because, unfortunately for us all, oh. another adventure game video is in the works. Oh, no. One far darker than the Druids. I'll see you then. Maybe. Oh, uh. <laughs> the sound quality there. Anyway, thank you all so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Consider subscribing and doing all those nice things you do for streaming. What? I don't know. I guess so.
<laughs> Thank you all so much. We have almost doubled the length of this video just by talking constantly. I don't know how we do this each time, Fable, but we do. <laughs> We're just having fun, Mac. Don't worry about it. I, I know, I won't. 